Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I believe this is part five of stars. This should be the end. I have only have uh, a few chapters left in Revelation where it mentions star or star. So let's get going here. Get your King James Bible. We're going to go to the book of Revelation in chapter six. Now, um, if anybody's interested, I have numbers and scriptures by E.W. Bullinger. He lived, oh, I don't know, like a hundred and something years ago. And he did a pretty decent job on, um, well, numbers in Scripture. Like good numbers in Scripture are 1, 3, uh, 7, 10, 12, 24, and 40. And then you got not so good numbers that are usually associated, for example, 6. The number of a man, you know, 666, 9, 11, 13, um, and I'm not sure about 33. I, I know the, um, the Masonic's Lodge, the Freemasons love 33. That's like their favorite number, but I'm not sure. I, I'll be honest, I haven't really looked into 33. But there's like certain numbers that pop up, you know, like the flood of Noah was 40 days. Jesus went into the desert to fast for 40 days. Uh, after the resurrection, Jesus was with the apostles in the book of Acts for 40 days. So, you know, there's certain numbers pop up and they have meanings. And I know a little bit about them. I really don't know enough to teach a lesson on it but uh bullinger and there's another guy named ivan panin p-a-n-i-n he was actually a russian mathematician and he started looking into the bible i don't know if he was a believer before but by the time he got through looking at the bible and numbers he became convinced that it was divinely inspired. Absolutely. I don't remember the story. I mean, I've done so much research. I just can't remember all the details. And I'm just bringing this out of the top of my head. So, you know. But it's funny. Six is associated with man. Fallen man. Genesis 6. What happens? The fallen angels mess around with the women. Revelation chapter 6. Ah, oh, well, let's get going on. Take a look at Revelation 6. Verse 1. And I saw when the land, Lamb, the Lamb, the Lamb of God, Christ, when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. And one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. There's a lot of people that will tell you that this is the Antichrist. Don't believe it. This is Christ. This is Jesus. And they'll say, well, Jesus doesn't have a bow. He's got a sword. Well, do you know that the Lord sends arrows of destruction upon a wicked world? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He does. So keep that in mind. I'm going to post the uh, image so you can make up your mind. All right, so, and I saw, behold, a white horse. What is white? Purity, right? And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. 
And he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red. It's funny. Communism is the... Uh, red's the color of communism, isn't it? And power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Communism in the last, oh, I don't know, 100 years or so um, has, you know, maybe 120 years, has killed more people between Russia and China than probably any other period in the history of the world. They don't even know how many people have died under communism. All you hear about is the uh, six um, and then the um, million. Yeah, that's all you ever hear about. You don't hear about the millions of communism. No, you don't hear about that. Verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Back in the days of Rome, a penny was a day's wage for an unskilled laborer. Okay, an unskilled laborer's wage for an entire work day. A penny. A measure of wheat. You're basically talking about a loaf of bread for wheat or three uh, loaves of barley bread. And barley bread is considered poor man's food. So basically, it's going to take a day's wage to buy a loaf of bread. Bad news. Famine. Just like the uh, the arrows. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death and Hell, followed with him. And power was given over to them unto over unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword war and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth hmm just like the uh, the arrows when has a quarter a fourth part you know a quarter 25 percent when has the fourth part of the earth died in one massive thing ask any preterist oh what what year did that happen oh that was 70 a.d oh really a quarter of the earth died in 70 a.d really are you sure because it must be in the secret history books because i uh, you know a lot of people died in 70 a.d but a quarter of the entire earth? Uh, I don't think so. Which is why I think preterism is garbage. And power was given over them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, war, and with hunger, famine, and with death, probably disease, and with the beasts of the earth. Uh, these are not necessarily... Four-legged beasts. These could be two-legged beasts. Yeah, the Bible does teach there are beasts with hands and feet. Yes, it does. Read the book of Jonah. Hmm. Uh, that was common knowledge a hundred years ago, but today um, your paid-off pastors, no, 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 no. Not true. Verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar, I saw under the altar, the altar in heaven, 
the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice. Who cried? The souls of those slain for the word of God that were under the altar. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Uh, if you listen to the Christadelphians, the Jehovah's Witnesses, and a few other her heretical groups, they'll tell you that when you die, you cease to exist in any way, shape, or form. They call that soul sleep. And you don't exist until the resurrection. But this verse right here says that there are those under the altar, the souls of those that were slain, they were killed for the word of God. And they cried with a loud voice. How, does, how do dead people that don't exist cry with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Uh... Oh, well, that's a that's metaphorical. Right. See, people that don't know the Bible get into all kinds of trouble. Oh, yeah, soul sleep. Uh, so, verse 11, And white robes were given unto every one of them. Unto who? The souls under the altar that were slain for the word of God. They were killed for their faith. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. You see, until the last person in the tribulation dies, Christ is not coming back. I mean, this right here just about puts a nail in the coffin to the pre-trib rapture. I mean, you know, really? Really, dude? Uh, and I beheld until he had opened, when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Read Matthew 24. Read Mark 13. Read Joel. All right, real quick. Joel chapter 2. We'll start in verse 29. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days, what days? The last days, will I pour out my spirit. The Lord's going to pour out his spirit in the last days. In Matthew 24, it even tells you that when they deliver you up to the councils and in the synagogues to be executed, not to think about what you're going to say because um, the Lord, the Holy Spirit is going to speak through you. Read Matthew 24. Um, I'm not going to read it, but it's in there. You know, pause right now and then go read it. I mean, don't think about what you're going to say if that's your lot in life. You know, some of us are going to have to die for the faith. Others are going to go into the wilderness, Revelation chapter 12. I don't know. But uh, in those days will I pour out my spirit, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. And you could read the whole chapter 2 of the book of Joel. Um, there's a lot of prophecy in the Old, uh, Old Testament, and, and especially 
in the minor prophets there's a lot of prophecy people i mean they're very tiny that's why they're called minor they're they're tiny in size but they're packed full of information so let's go back to revelation chapter 6 verse 12 and i beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood and the stars of heaven oh wait that's why we're reading this the stars and we're not talking about hollywood and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth even as a fig tree fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind um the nation of judah the tribe of judah is likened unto a fig tree i think i did a bible study on that i think so i've mentioned it a few times but i think i've done an entire uh bible study on that and then israel's compared to uh grapes i mean what did adam and eve do when they were naked they took fig leaves to cover their private parts yeah they didn't cover their mouths eating that fruit no they didn't did they no they covered something else which should give you a hint about what happened all right so and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind and wind and spirit in the greek come from the same word believe it or not pneuma and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places boy that's a big earthquake and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in their underground bunkers that they dug oh wait that's the bob translation they hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and the rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand woo doggy and the answer to that is if you're not in christ you won't be able to stand yeah uh you know what i think i'm going to break this up in uh, let me uh, let me take a look at something real quick yeah i think i'm gonna uh i'm gonna make this some short things i'm gonna do one chapter of revelation at a time so i'm going to do revelation chapter six and i'm going to tie it into matthew 24 here so let's take a look at something we're going to probably skip around matthew 24 verse 1 and jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple and jesus said unto them see ye not all these things Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Jesus said there's going to come a time that there won't be, all this stuff is going to be destroyed. There's not even going to be one stone standing upon another. It's going to be leveled totally and completely. So when somebody tells you the wailing wall is part of the temple, you got a choice. You could either believe Jesus or you can believe the Antichrist over in the Middle East. I pick Jesus, but hey, you know, everybody get their own choice. And as he, Jesus, sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. There's going to be a lot of deception. 
Don't let anybody deceive you. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. So what's going to happen? And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Isn't that what we read in Revelation 6? A great sword. See that ye be not troubled, for these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. War. And there shall be famines. Bingo. Bread for a penny, right? And pestilences, which death, Revelation 6 said death, and earthquakes in divers or various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Uh, that's the introduction. Okay. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and you'll be raptured in the pre-trib rapture, and you won't have to worry about a darn thing, because I'm going to take care of you. Oh, no, no. That's the that's the Southern Baptist uh, in, uh, Bible version. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. Boy, you'll never hear Benny Hinn talk about that. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. What name is that? Do they hate the name Yeshua? No. They love the name Yeshua. What name? Jesus. They hate that name. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended. Are you offended by the name of Jesus? I'm not. And shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity, wickedness, sin, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Things are going to get bad. People are going to be have very, very little love. But he that shall endure unto the end, the end of what? The end of their lives, I guess, or the end of Christ's coming. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Let's skip to 21. For then shall be great tribulation, trouble, such as not was such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no nor ever shall be, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. Things are going to be so bad if the Lord didn't cut things short, nobody would be left alive. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders. Miracles. They're going to show miracles, people. Insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. See, in the previous study, I mentioned Christ is going to be coming in the clouds and every eye is going to see him. But tell that to the preterists. They don't believe that. I mean, plain, easy to read. Anybody, a fifth grader could understand, but they can't. Because I guess they don't have the spirit of the Lord. I don't know. Maybe the Lord blinds them. I don't know. Maybe they're deceivers. I don't know. I don't have that kind of spiritual discernment. So, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he, the Christ, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the secret rapture come and take everybody away before the bad stuff happens. Uh, no, no, no. 
For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. You know, what happens with lightning? You get thunder. You know, it comes out of the east and even lights up the west. Sheesh. God, those pre-tribbers are dense. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. And people say, oh, well, there's uh, uh, eagles are not vultures. Well, I want to make two points here. One, eagles will eat uh, what they call carrion or, um, you know, dead stuff. Eagles will do that, especially in the winter. Eagles are not picky. But did you know there's actually an, a, a vulture called an eagle vulture? Yeah, there is. It's huge. And it's been known to, to attack goats, uh, those goats that, mountain goats, you know, they, they climb up the side of the mountain and actually a, attack them and knock them down off the uh, side of a mountain where they fall to their death. Yeah. Verse 29. Listen to this. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. After. Keyword after. Immediately before the pre-trib rapture. That's the Southern Baptist version. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. Revelation 6, Joel chapter 2, right? So shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the stars shall fall from heaven. Isn't that what we just read in Je Revelation 6? Yeah. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken like the scroll rolling together. You know, this stuff, it, 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 it fits like a glove perfectly. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Wow. I don't, I must, I, I can't find the secret rapture in there anywhere. Can you? No, me neither. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his, le his elect, From the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Wow. Now there's something interesting in Mark 13. This is a parallel to Matthew 24. Um, let's go, Mark 13, verse 4. The disciples say, tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? And Jesus answering them began to say, take heed lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. See, it's parallel. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. Listen carefully. Verse 9. But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils and in the synagogues. And who hangs out in the synagogues? Yeah. Ye shall be beaten. Ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak. Don't think about what you're going to say. Neither do ye premeditate. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is going to speak through 
whoever is in front of these councils and will be a testimony against them. I mean, here it is right here. Remember in Joel, it says they'll pour out a spirit. The Lord's going to pour out his spirit upon his people. Verse 12. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death and the father of the son and children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. Unbelieving children are going to rise up against their believing parents and cause them to be put to death. Why? Oh, I don't know. 12 years of uh, evolution in public school, you know, elementary school, middle school, high school, and then you send them to the college and university and they're taught four more years of uh, evolution. 16 years of college where everybody told uh, them that their parents are a bunch of old fashioned idiots that don't believe in, they don't believe the science. They don't believe the science. Yeah. And they, you can't, you can't understand why your kids come back from college and they are unbelievers. Oh, gee, I wonder why. Maybe you should have put them through trade school. You know? You know what plumbers make? <laughs> Electricians? Yeah, I, you know, what's wrong with, yeah, I, yeah, I, whatever. And children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. And ye shall be hated of all name for my Yeshua's sake. I don't think so. You're going to be hated for the name of Jesus. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Tell me this doesn't match Revelation 6 and Joel chapter 2. It's all it it's there people all right well i'm gonna i guess i'm gonna make this part yeah uh i think part five so i'm gonna do individual studies i guess instead of making it all one big thing i thought about it so and you know you should look up everything that i show you you know if i give you a a chapter to read read it you know i've had people actually accuse me of pulling verses out of context except for i read the whole chapter pretty well usually usually i read the whole chapter right pretty hard to do take things out of context when you're reading an entire chapter Ugh. yeah yeah they're the ones that uh do the uh pulling the verses out of context so what can i tell you all right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.